In this short video, we look at some annoying notation that tends to cause problems for students in trig and calculus. The reciprocal trig functions, one over the sine, which is cosecant, one over the cosine, which is secant, and one over the tangent, which is cotangent. And the inverse trig functions, arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent, use very similar notation, but are not the same functions. First, we look at the sine. You can write sine squared in two different ways, sin2 and then x, or you can put the sin in parentheses and the 2 as an exponent outside. Either way, they mean the same thing, multiply the sine of x by the sine of x. But when you replace that 2 with a negative 1, suddenly it makes a difference where you put it. Sine negative 1x and sine x inside parentheses with a negative 1 outside do not mean the same thing. This is annoying notation. When you put the negative 1 outside the parentheses, it means 1 over the sine, which is the cosecant. This is the reciprocal function. You can learn more about these in my video on reciprocal trig functions. The reciprocal sine, or cosecant, has a graph shown here in purple. Those U-shaped curves extend upward and downward approaching y equals positive infinity on the upper ones and approaching y equals negative infinity on the lower ones. But when you move that negative 1, sine negative 1 x, it can also be written as the arc sine, and that is the inverse of the sine function. You can learn more about this in my video on inverse trig functions. To find the inverse sine function, we first have to select a portion of the sine function that is 1 to 1, shown here in blue, and then we reverse the order of x and y to get the inverse sine function shown in red. That red curve does not continue. It stops right there at those dots. That's all there is to it. It's definitely very different from the reciprocal curve, even though the notation is very similar. The same applies for the cosine. If you want to, say, cube the cosine, you can put the 3 just right above the s, or you can put the whole cosine x in parentheses and put the 3 outside the parentheses. Either way, it means the same thing. Multiply cosine by itself three times. But the negative 1 is another matter. If you put the negative 1 outside the parentheses, it means 1 over the cosine, which is the secant. That's the reciprocal function. As we saw in my video on reciprocal trig functions, it's these U-shaped curves that keep going forever up and down. If you put the negative 1 inside, COS negative 1 x, now you have the inverse cosine, which can also be written arc cosine. To find that, we restricted the domain on cosine to get a piece of the cosine that was 1 to 1. We switched the order of x and y and formed the inverse cosine, as shown here in red. You can learn more about that in my video on inverse trig functions. The inverse cosine does not keep going. It stops right there at those dots. That's all there is to it, and it's clearly not the same as the reciprocal function. Now we consider the tangent function. Again, if you have a 2 or a 3 as an exponent, it doesn't matter where you put it. It means you're multiplying the tangent function by itself that many times. The negative 1, it matters very much where you put it because it's two different things depending on where it goes. If you have tangent inside the parentheses with a negative 1 outside, that means 1 over the tangent, also known as the cotangent. That's the reciprocal of tangent. As we saw in the video on reciprocal trig functions, it forms these purple curves here, which keep going indefinitely up and down. If you put the negative 1 inside tangent negative 1 x, also called the arc tangent, that's the inverse tangent function. You restrict tangent to a piece that's 1 to 1, shown here in blue, you switch the order of x and y, and you get the inverse tangent, shown here in red. And it does go indefinitely left and right, but not up and down. The inverse tangent function is very different from the reciprocal tangent function. To sum it up, we just have some very annoying notation here. We have inherited this from previous generations of mathematicians. They were doing the best they could with the limited symbols available on the typewriter keyboard, and it's so widely used now, we're not likely to get rid of it. The reciprocal trig functions and the inverse trig functions are absolutely not the same thing, even though their notation is very similar.